Hello. My name is Cheryl Dole with Dole Designs. Uh, we do artisan jewelry and we also do lapidary work. And what I want to go over today with you is stabilizing. I've had a lot of requests for this. I did a previous video on stabilizing uh, with the old-fashioned method and the jar that takes a whole week um, working with resin in that respect. What we're going to work with today will be with the vacuum chamber. It's a much more effective way to stabilize stone, especially when you're stabilized bulk stone a lot faster. Um, so I want to go over that with you. It, it'll make your life so much easier if you're going to be stabilizing quite a bit of material. Um, the other way is Opticon. We might go over that in another video, but let's focus on this, this vacuum chamber uh, first. I bought this vacuum chamber um, about a year ago, I think. Maybe not quite off Amazon. I will link below, if not this one, the closest one I can to the exact thing I have here, or back, exact pump and chamber. I got a kit. It comes with a pump. I'll, I'll go over that as well. Uh, then in addition to that, I also bought what's called cactus juice, and we'll review that, and I will link that supply as well. Um, it runs about $105 uh, a gallon for this, but you can use it almost up to a year, um, sometimes 18 months, depending on uh, you know, keeping it clean, keeping it stored properly. It needs to be stored in a cool, dark place. But if you store it properly and keep it as clean as possible, you can keep it almost to a year to 18 months. Um, or around a year to 18 months. Uh, let's see, what else do I need to tell you about? The vacuum chamber kit was around $169, I believe. The pump that comes with it is one where you're going to have to shut it on and off. I haven't found another pump that it is a reasonable price range um, to get with this process that doesn't start getting really hot after about 20 minutes and especially if you're in a warm climate in the summertime we put a fan on it even in between so what we do is about every 20 minutes we shut it off and then we come back uh, leave it off for about 10-15 minutes let it cool down come back out and then turn it back on in the winter time we can leave it go a little bit longer um, and it cools off a little bit quicker but if you're in a hot climate and it's hot all the time, you're definitely going to either want to invest in a bigger pump or make sure you put a fan on it and do it and check it every 15 to 20 minutes because it does get hot and it will burn it up. However, with that said, even though it takes some time, it still makes the process much faster than that whole, you know, several days in a jar with resin. Um, now, the Opticon method is still a wonderful method as well, but we're going to cover this method here today. Uh, this does a lot of material at one time. And we'll go over what I'll run through the whole process. Also, uh, with this, um, we have a bucket inside here. It's a three gallon bucket for a five gallon um, container. Uh, the bucket is very clean. And the reason I do a bucket in here is when um, you want the cactus juice, the resin, to cover your stone. And that kind of just displaces some of the volume of uh, a five gallon container here. So you don't need quite as much resin. For what you're doing we do have another one available for when we need it but i'd really use it just after this one goes bad if we can do that um so anyhow i'll, I'll go through all the process each of the components i'll link them down below for you so that you know the price range how to get them there's several listed on amazon you can kind of look through see which ones you like best this one i got mainly because and i'll show you in a minute the um, valve and gauges are on the actual vacuum chamber tin itself versus the lid that way if I need to replace the lid I can just replace the lid if it happened to crack or something uh, versus getting what having to find one with this the gauges and everything on it um, is it better not necessarily um, both would be fine so if you find one that you like that has it on the lid that's solely up to you uh, but again there's several price ranges there's um, several kits available on Amazon uh, I looked at other places I thought Amazon actually had the best selection so that uh, That'll work out fine. You can li I'll link it, and then you just shop around from there. Cactus juice. I actually get that off Amazon. It's, like I said, it's $105 a gallon. Um, it's a two-part. It comes with a little, and we'll go over that more, a little activator, and then a one-gallon um, jug. And if you want to get uh, two gallons, it's like $200, so you get a little bit of a discount there. Let's go over some of the reasons why someone would want to stabilize stone. I get a lot of that in the jewelry side of it. You know, a lot of people are, I want an all natural or um, why do you stabilize? A lot of questions on that. So if you pull what's called a Mohs hardness scale, 
it's going to take a lot of different stones and what this hardness is and it's all comparative to a diamond which is number 10 on the most hardness scale so it's the hardest uh, mineral uh, so everything's compared to that so 10 being the hardest what i'm going to stabilize today is number eight turquoise Let's see if i can get that to focus but i'm going to be um, stabilizing number eight turquoise actually quite a bit of it and it is rated around a 7 to 7.5 on the most hardness scale now there are a lot of 7 to 7.5 material that's great to go ahead and cab but on turquoise sometimes it's a, it's a little softer or the host material where it meets with the host material in the turquoise it kind of can get kind of um, broken like i did this cab just to test this because this was supposed to be already stabilized not that it wasn't sometimes you do need to do it a couple times but um, some of the turquoise in it was coming away from the host material so that told me it needed it again um, or maybe this batch got missed I don't know but it's fine I don't mind stabilizing it some uh, material we get in we take it from a rough form and stabilize it just so it can be slabbed and then once it's slabbed then I will stabilize it one more time so that that goes through again the process twice um, and sometimes things will have like little lines through it or little cracks through it that you might even want to use the next method I'll go over um, in, in a future video which is the Opticon then at that point to fill in those cracks and crevices to even further the stabilization. Without stabilization several stones would not be able to be used in jewelry and that's the reason for the stabilization. Uh, if it's going to crumble or just turn to dust, if it's too porous won't take a polish, um, it, it's not always good to use in jewelry. So you take azurite, which is very soft. Some shatakites, which are very soft. When you get into that 3.5 in the Mohs hardness scale, 3 to 3.5 range, that material is virtually useless. And um, and that's my opinion. I might get some disagreements. I always do get some kind of disagreements in the comments, but that's fine. In my opinion, that material, when I'm silversmithing and I'm putting pressure on the bezel to um, you know, hold that piece of, uh, or that stone into the bezel setting, I'm putting some good pressure on it. So I don't want it to dent in. I don't want it to crumble. I don't want it to break. And I also don't want to make a piece of jewelry and it be dropped and then that stone crack or crumble. Um, so there's a lot of gorgeous, gorgeous stones out there that are just too soft to use otherwise. And this method allows it to be used. I don't feel like it's taking away from the stone. It's still just as beautiful. It's actually adding to it it's giving you that usability so just kind of give you a brief explanation as to why to stabilize with all that said let's go ahead and get started with the stabilization and i can go through this process a little more in detail and you can see how just how easy it is all right let's go ahead and get started um, i've moved this pump up here just to show it to you and then i'm going to put it back we've got a little lever or a little shelf on the side of this craftsman tool cabinet that we leave it sit on but i did bring it up here just to kind of show it to you there's an on off switch on one side um, when it comes there's a cap on this uh vent here make sure you pull that off and make sure you put oil in it and most kits do come with oil there's a little window right here i'd lift it up but it's got it's all attached and the cord's kind of short there but there's a little window here that will show you the level of your oil always check it before you get started um, anytime you want to stabilize because you will burn this pump up very quickly without it. And you don't want to do that. It's bad enough it gets really hot. <laughs> so uh, make sure you got oil in it. Read all the directions. Um, I also get replacement oil off of Amazon. Um, you might well get it at your local hardware store. It's just vacuum pump oil. And let me go ahead and I'm going to put this back on the shelf. Um, so when I turn it on, and there's a switch over here. I'm just going to flip when we do turn it on. So let me put that back down on this shelf. Alrighty, now I'm going to move this forward a little bit. Now on this vacuum chamber, we got the gauges right here, and then you have a release valve here, and the other um, valve that goes over to the, the vacuum pump. So I'm going to close the release valve before we get started, and before I turn it on, I will open the pump valve. This is a glass lid. It's a really heavy lid, and it's got this rubber seal. So when you get ready to do the vacuum, um, when you turn the pump on, make sure that all of this is covered on the rim. If you have one little bit of air coming through, trust me, I spent so much time trying to figure out why it was not working. And it's because I did not have this on just completely um, blocking off any release of air. So just a little 
tidbit from my mistake. So let me move this for a moment here. So then inside I have this three gallon bucket. This is a five gallon vacuum chamber. Make sure if you're going to use a bucket like this that you make sure it's very, very clean. You don't want to gunky up your cactus juice because it's quite expensive. Um, and this also helps you disperse where you don't have to use much, as much cactus juice. And it's good for cleanup when you go to clean your vacuum chamber. It's not all inside the vacuum chamber that way. Um, so we got all that squared away. I'm going to begin putting the turquoise into this bucket here. And then we'll pour the um, cactus juice over it. And then we'll go ahead and turn it on. So I've got quite a bit here, so I'll see how long it takes me. I might just stop the video or I'll fast forward it. Might do that. Just zoom through this part. Actually, I'm going to put that little cab in that I did as well. See if I can rescue it. You want to make sure your stones are clean beforehand so you don't get a lot of dirt again in your cactus juice. So I have uh, cleaned all these and then try to let them air dry as much as possible. You also don't want to get a bunch of water in your resin. Now what we're doing here um, when we run the vacuum pump, I'll go ahead and talk while I'm doing this. When you turn the vacuum pump on, what you're doing is pulling out all the gases and um, air within the stone. Um, so that vacuum is vacuuming out all of that air and gases out of the porous portions of the stone. Then when we go back and release the valve when the process is complete, at that point the resin then gets sucked into all the pores and crack of the stone. So that's what actually gets the resin into it, not the vacuum process itself. The vacuum process is, um, is basically a disbursement, uh, getting the gases out so that the resin can then take the gases place. Now this process does take overnight. Um, we're going to do this until, I'll tell you, show you in a little bit, all the bubbles stop. It can take two to five hours to do this process here. And then we, once we release all the gases, then we let it sit overnight. Um, you're supposed to do it twice the amount of time that it takes you to, I got all these little tidbits here now. You're supposed to do it twice the amount of time, leaving it in the resin without the pump going or anything like that, um, and released, the valves released, double the time that it took you to actually pull the gases out. I'm going to leave some of these little tinies out. But for me, I just do it and, and leave it overnight. Even if I finish in the afternoon, it's just the safety bet just to leave it overnight. All right, so we have all that turquoise in there. There's a lot of area in there for the resin to flow through um, because they're smaller pieces. So let me now go ahead and get the cactus juice. Now, when you first get your cactus juice, let me grab the bottle. When you first get your cactus juice, it's going to be almost clear. This looks a little yellow, and it's just because we used it so much. Um, now, on the resin it's all or the activator it's going to come with a little bottle about that big you're going to want to pour it into the clear liquid that you first get and that's going to activate it and then you're going to need to shake it for quite a while until you not no longer see any kind of um flakes or um milkiness or anything like that you just want to shake it to get the cactus juice and the resin all mixed together so be sure you do that all right, so now I'm going to go ahead and pour the cactus juice in. You want to cover your stones completely, but make sure you don't overfill. If you don't fill your stones all the way up to the brim of the bucket and then put a bunch of cactus juice in, it's going to overflow. It does bubble up. Um, so right now I have the bucket not even three quarters of the way full. So that's perfect. So you saw how much we're actually doing with a, a five gallon uh, chamber and a three gallon bucket. We could have actually done a little bit more. But sometimes I do put rough stone in here, like, you know, we, I put 10 pounds in here, 12 pounds. So you can also do rough. Sometimes it's necessary to do that in order to be able to then put it in the saw and get a slab cut without it crumbling. That was perfect. All right, any, any more stone, it would have been too much. So that turned out actually perfect. Couldn't ask for any better. 
All right. So now we've got our cactus juice in there. We get the lid. Give me a second. Now I'm going to put the lid back on here. So again, make sure that that's sealed all the way. You're going to notice when it doesn't bubble up. Because when I turn the pump on, and I'll show you when I come back out to turn the pump off because it'll be so hot. Um, but I'll show you inside here and the bubbles that happen. You'll be able to tell by that. But you'll, as soon as I turn the pump on, the pressure gauge is going to go start going go up gradually. And then you're going to start seeing bubbles in here. And that's just the vacuum starting to pull the gases out. And you're going to be doing this back and forth, um, turning the pump on and off so it doesn't overheat. But you'll be doing that uh, until the bubbles start to dissipate. Some people like to wait till they're completely gone. As long as they are just almost gone or completely gone, you should be good from there. Then we'll release the air back in slowly and then let it sit overnight. But let's go ahead. Now I need to turn the valve or open the valve for the vacuum chamber. So that allow the air to come be uh, vacuumed out or the gases. And we have the release valve then closed. So release valve closed, vacuum valve open. And then we're going to go ahead and turn this on. It can be a bit noisy. And then we're going to watch for the bubbles to start happening here. All right, so we're going to let that go um, until the uh, pump might get pretty warm in about 20 minutes. And then I'll come back out here, turn the pump off. And I'll be showing you the bubbles and everything, and then we'll go back and forth like that a couple times. And then I will, once we're almost finished, show you uh, show you the release process of releasing the gases back into, or the resin into the stone, and releasing the air out of the vacuum chamber. So, I'll be back. Alright, that wasn't as long as for you as it was for me. Um, see all those little bubbles? So we have to wait until those bubbles die down before this is finished. Uh, so again, it could take two to five hours. It's kind of random, uh, depending on how many gases are in the um, stone. So right now that's bubbling, and here's your gauge. Your gauge is going to read, um, hopefully that'll focus here in a moment. But your gauge is going to be pretty much pegged when you've got a good vacuum seal. And again, if you do not have a good vacuum seal, there you go. Um, you want to keep double checking that lid. And so you do. It should be pretty much immediate that it starts bubbling like this once you turn your pump on the first time. So right now we're going to check our pump. Here's the little ledge I said it was on. We're going to see if it's hot. Actually, that's pretty cool right now. Not too bad. I'm going to leave it on a little bit longer. And then once that gets too hot, I will come in and... Uh, back out and turn it off for about 15 minutes let it cool off and turn it back on so right now it's been running about 10 minutes so i'll probably let it run another 10 minutes and check it so see how far i can go before it starts getting too warm but that's it guys just keep going back and forth let it bubble when your pump gets hot turn it off let it cool off a little bit turn it back on it'll keep bubbling and once it starts to die down and i'll show you that once we get close which won't be long for you um then we'll Go ahead and release the uh, valve and let the resin soak on into the stone. See you in a bit. All right, guys, move this pump up here so you can see it a little bit better. Here's the oil um, gauge that I told you about. We're up in here on the max, but um, here's your pump. This has been running now for about five hours, so it's really slowed down a lot. So we're going to go ahead and shut it down and then let it sit for the night. So I'm going to go ahead and shut off this pump. And then let me show you how to release the valve here. Now I do this really slowly because you don't want it to go, you know, just real fast because you want that resin to slowly be pulled into your stone so you're just going to release your valve until you can see it start to move uh, whoops i'm going to actually close this valve sorry and then release this valve this is the 
release valve. So we're going to close our pump valve because we don't want anything going back down that line. So slowly release your release valve here. Okay, you see it slowly going. Just a little bit more. Sorry, it's not wanting to focus real well. There, I don't want to go that fast. There. And then by that valve going that slowly, it's just gradually pulling that resin into the stones. And then we're going to leave it sit overnight. And then tomorrow I will be back, which won't be that long for you. It'll just be a few seconds. But I will be back, and we're going to bake it in what I call my Easy Bake Oven. It's a convection Faberware, I think it is, French door convection oven tabletop that I got from uh, Walmart for $99. Uh, but anyhow, it works very well. We do it at 235 degrees for two hours. But I will show you that process here in a few. For me, it will be overnight. For you, it will be a few seconds after we get this process done here. But yeah, that's about perfect. You just want to slowly go over. This turquoise is going to be beautiful. It's about uh, 21 pounds of uh, no, no, I'm sorry. 11 pounds of uh, number 8 turquoise in there. That we did earlier. There we go. So that's what you're wanting to see. It is almost finished there. And then once it's finished, I'll just go ahead and open it the rest of the way up. Hello, editing me here. I wanted to go through and clarify all the uh, positioning of the valves here because I know when I first started stabilizing, that was my main concern is where are all these positioned during the process. So once you've gotten all of your stones in the vacuum chamber, you filled it with cactus juice, covered the top, you put your lid on, you're ready to turn on your pump and draw that vacuum. You're going to need to put this um, toggle here. You're going to want to turn it parallel. This is your uh, cord to your pump. You're going to want to put it parallel with the pump. Then you're going to want to take your air release valve here and you're going to be pulling that forward so that it's closed. Whenever uh, the valves, the toggles are parallel, that means they're open. And then when they're coming forward like this or cross-sectioned, um, they are closed. So right now we've got the release valve closed, the, the pump valve open, and we're ready to just start stabilizing our stone, turn the vacuum pump on, and watch the, the bubbles roll, pulling out those gases. Now once you're, um, you come out and your vacuum pump needs turned off because it's getting really hot and you want to cool it off for a little while, you leave everything the same and then you turn it back on and it goes back and forth. Now when it's all finished, your bubbles have died down, you're ready to um, release that vacuum and pull the um, resin into the stone by releasing that vacuum. Then what you're going to do, so you're all finished, you turned off your pump, you're going to close your pump valve, and then you're going to gradually and very slowly, like I had shown you in the, the previous clip, you're going to gradually release this release valve, and that's going to be pulling that resin into your stone as you're releasing that vacuum. And then you're going to watch your gauge go all the way down to zero very slowly. So when you're all finished, it's going to be in that position. So this is going to be completely open and your vacuum pump um, closed. Now, what I had done in a previous video, and I'm not sure that you noticed, but I wanted to explain why. Now, you can just leave this now for, like I said, you got to let it soak for double the time. Um, or double the time it took for the bubbles to dissipate. Or overnight. All right, so this has been in here now. Um, the turquoise been sitting in the cactus juice for 
overnight so actually it's been at least a good 12 24 hours so we're going to remove this lid and then we're going to take the stone out and get it ready to go into the oven um, so what he's going to do is he's going to actually we've got rubber gloves on um, i don't want it to splatter and that's why we're not just pulling the bucket out it's pretty heavy and then draining it so he's just going to put it in a strainer we'll strain out the rest of the cactus juice into a very clean bucket always make sure your bucket's clean but he's going to be taking all the stone out and then I'm going to be putting it onto the foil trays. I usually put foil on to protect the trays so everything's not dripping down in the oven. And then I put those trays then into the convection oven. You can use this toaster oven. Just something that will get up to at least 235 degrees. And we'll be doing that at 200 or for two hours. So 235 degrees is what I usually do. Other people do various temperatures. But we do 235 at two hours. It seems to work out great. But we'll show you that in just a few moments. But for right now, again, he's taking the stone out of the cactus juice. And we're letting it drain into the bucket so we can rescue as much of that expensive cactus juice as we can. I want to lift the whole thing out. Do you want to lift it all out now? Yeah. That's fine. It's just easier. Okay. Whoops. Sorry. Kick the uh, tripod here. All yeah. right. He's going to try to lift this bucket out. I'm going to take my glove off because I don't want to get it. Well, I can do it this way. Yeah, we can wipe out the inside then. All right, now I'll move the chamber off to the side. All right, so this makes it a little easier for him to get all those out. So another thing about the bucket, well, for one thing, if you do get one with a meter on the front, um, you've got to kind of, if you're going to come up over that in the amount of juice and everything, you have to um, put a bucket in anyhow just so that that vacuum chamber doesn't suck in any of that resin. Um, but if you get one that's on the top, you won't have to use a bucket. But it is really nice to have the bucket because of this. You know, pulling it out, not having a mess to clean in the, the chamber. So, um, I don't know. I think we did it one time within the chamber yeah. uh, for a piece of rough. Um, so, if you have a larger rough, it then, yeah, it comes in handy. Then you got to clean it and worry but, yeah. about getting it in there. <laughs> But if you're going to do larger rough and fill it up past that point of where you saw my valve on the vacuum chamber, you might want to get the vacuum chamber that has the, the valves and everything on the lid um, so that you don't pull in any of the resin into the pump itself. Oh, so there's pros and cons to having it on the front like that. Um, a con is definitely is just protecting it that doesn't pull anything into the valves. Make sure a piece doesn't fall back in because you'll get splattered with it. <laughs> Did you just get splattered? Yes. So I need to get a tray to put some of that on so that you don't have that you have room. So I can glove up and start putting it on a tray. I wanted to get the bucket light enough to be able to do this. And he's not getting splattered now. He pulled out enough of it to where he could just dump it like that. And now I lift this up. Now I can set it on something. Will it sit back in here? Yeah. All right, now we can strain out the rocks from that. Right. All right, and so. I got my juice in here. Then. So he's got his juice in here. We have a more fine mesh strainer that we'll run it through one more time to put it away. Um, once we're all done with uh, getting this part going into the oven. So I will be right back. It'll just be a couple seconds for you. I'm going to tray this turquoise up and we're going to stick it in the oven. Hopefully I get all of this in one time, but if not, I'll have to run it twice. But um, see you in a moment. All right, we are out here. I do this outside. Um, we're getting ready to bake these in the Easy Bake Oven. But, um, it's actually a convection oven by Faberware. Uh, it was $99. I got this because of the French doors. Uh, if I want to put a piece of rough in there and take out that middle shelf, it's a lot easier to do that. Um, so this works out perfect for larger rough. Um, I think the highest I put in there is like 12 or 13 pounds, um, but it worked out great. And then I allowed us to slice it um, or saw the different the slabs. And then if we needed to, and in some cases, then again, stabilize just the slabs of it. So this works out great. Um, we got it at Walmart, again, $99. I don't know if it's on Amazon or not, but um, you check. If I can find it again, it wasn't that long ago we bought this one. Um, we had a real small one. This works out much better, but I'll link it. Um, again, it doesn't have to be so-called convection. I think it tends to work a little better, but it can be just a um, toaster oven. As long as it gets to 235, we keep them in for uh, two hours. 
Um, now different stones may call for different temperatures, but we've done good doing everything at 235 for two hours. Um, if it needs a little bit more, you can put it in for a little bit longer. But what you want the stones to be then when it comes out is dry. You're going to see the resin baked on. What this is going to do is do the final step of the process. Um, it's baking that resin in, hardening that resin into the stone, which is a final step to stabilizing it. And then they're ready to cab. In fact, I'm hoping to get done with everything and actually cab a few of these tonight. Uh, again, this is the number eight turquoise. Uh, I do it outside uh, and whenever I can, simply because as you're baking it, it will put off fumes. I do check it periodically, make sure everything's okay, but it does put off some, you know, nasty fumes. Uh, and you don't want to have that closed area safety first always have good ventilation in the winter time We can't do it out here. We open doors and we put out fans and ventilation um, So always have the proper ventilation. Don't stand around it. Um, just leave it and just check on it, but um, Follow your safety protocols uh, That's what we do um, I want you to do what's safe for you anything you might want to look up in terms of the safety aspect of it is safety first always be safe with it when we do it outside it really makes it nice because obviously it's outside <laughs> but um it does it does fume up pretty good um so always have ventilation all right so let's go ahead and get started i need to plug this in here um there we go so that's going to come on i'm still playing around with this is the only thing setting I know how to do so I'll go and get everything in and put it in there it's not like I've done anything else but rocks in here so that's pretty much the only setting I've used so I'll probably have to play around with it a little bit but um, we're gonna go ahead and put the rocks in now like I said I have the heavier ones over here um, I'm gonna put them on the bottom and your stones can touch we tried we wanted to get all these done at one time and this is all of them so I'm hoping it all fits in here okay yeah this fit in and then these are the lighter ones i'm putting that on the top here there we go see that makes it so much handy to have that wide open double door situation there all right closed up you might not be able to see the programming here but i'm going to go ahead and put it on convection um and then i'm going to change my temperature to 235 it was on 350 there and then I'm going to set my time to two hours oops there we go so we got 235 two hours hit start and there we go so that's it and I'll be back in a little while I'll show them to you after I take them out they, they're really hot when I start to take them out so I'll let them cool a little bit get them to the point I can take them out show them to you at that point but then they're ready to cab so we will be back shortly all right we are back and guys you can tell I'm losing some daylight so I want to get these out plus I want to cab some of them tonight um, th but that shut off after two hours and I opened the doors to let it cool a little bit I do have a pot holder here because they're still I'm sure hot hasn't been that long and I'll take my handy dandy tongs move them over into a clean platter over here and then we will be finished and I can take these in in cabs. So I'll start taking these out and talk to you a little bit. Um, please, if you haven't already, um, like and subscribe to our uh, channel and hit the subscribe notification or notification bell so you'll hear, see all of our uploaded videos. We are going to start doing a lot of lapidary and silver silversmithing videos. Uh, we've kind of invested quite a lot in camera equipment, lighting equipment, still learning it, obviously. Um, so I apologize if these, uh, this video has not been exactly up to a high quality. However, um, we are just learning this new equipment, but we will have quite a few videos out. So please hit the notification bell, like and subscribe to our channel uh, for some future uploads. And share this. Uh, anybody that you know in Lapidary that would like to see it, please share it. Um, keep in mind, you know, everybody does their own methods um so to speak and this is just how we do it um anyhow let's go ahead and take this out like i said it's still hot one good thing about it being colder outside is that it won't be as uh hot as long it'll start cooling off on it before it's here all right so i'm going to start putting that on this tray here take them out with the tongs they look great so make sure that they're dry 
Um, when they're this small, they should be. Some will stick together like that. That's fine. They'll come apart later. If you find some uh, resin stuck to them, no problem. Once you go to, some of it will flake off. Some of it, once you go to cab and saw, etc., it'll all come off. The big thing is that now you can use this stone, cab it, make it perfect for jewelry. Um, it, it's a lengthy process, but you know, really you can get this done in two days. You can do a couple batches even if you got the time or start early. Um, it, it's really a great stabilization method. Uh, and a lot quicker than a lot of the others. And then in some things, if you have a little uh, crack still remaining, you can either do it again. But at that point, if there's still a lot of cracks and things like that in your material, I recommend at that point, and we'll do that method uh, next, uh, would be the Opticon method, where basically you're filling the cracks in with the op Opticon and also turning around and baking that in. Uh, it takes a little more patience, but it, it is a, a true and tried method for many years. So it's also a great way to stabilize. So anyhow, I'm going to go ahead and keep taking these out. Um, I will insert a clip of some cabochon. If you haven't already seen them at the beginning of this video, uh, or if I might have posted, I'm not sure if I'm going to put them in the thumbnail or just the actual uh, rough. But I will either insert pictures of the cabochons either at the beginning or the end of this video. So definitely look for those. And again, we would appreciate it if you liked and shared our video and subscribe um, hit the notification bell and thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to having several more upcoming videos to share with you bye bye